Hi, I'm Beth from Sew Country, and for today's tutorial, I am sewing up the traditional wallet from Oso oh Gecko. This is a super quick pattern. I can sew one of these now in less than 30 minutes. Cut time takes about the same, so within an hour, I can have these wallets ready to go. I like these wallets for how quick they sew, sew up, and the pattern is written extremely well. It is not a long pattern, it is a short pattern, which means that every sentence gives you a very important instruction. So don't skim over the pattern, just take it sentence by sentence. It's not a long one, so it's an easy read and it comes together so quick. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about the ones I sewed up already and the materials I used. With a wallet like this, we're going to be having raw edges. That means we can use cork, vinyl, or anything non-fraying. Because of this, we want to make sure that we take the time to cut out the pieces precisely and that we pay attention to the materials we use. For this first one, I chose to use a vinyl from Mormino. I love this vinyl, it's gorgeous as you can see, and it sews great, especially on a domestic machine. But, it made a very thick wallet. If you're carrying this wallet in a purse or just holding it in your hand and carrying it, that's great. But if you're carrying this in your back pocket, that's not gonna be comfortable over extended periods of you sitting or even driving in a car and things like that. So I would not make another one with this vinyl, even though I love this vinyl. I would save this vinyl for a purse or a pouch, something like that. For on the inside of this one, I did just the card slot method. I did not use the coin pouch method. The wallet looks great. We have a slot for our cash, we have our credit card slots, and then we even have a couple of hidden pockets, which I think would be great for receipts or business cards or something like that. So this one was thick. The next one I did was cork. I love using cork. It's such a, a fun thing to sew with. You can see this one is thinner than the vinyl. So this was a better option right off the bat. And so for this one with the cork, I did put in the coin pouch. I didn't add a snap to it, but you, the pattern does tell you to add a snap. I just didn't do that. But this is the coin pouch feature, or I think they may call it a purse in the pattern. But anyway, this, the car slots on this side are the same. You still have your slot for your cash. And this one came together really quick. I loved it, but still just a little thicker than I would have liked. So then I pulled out a super thin bottle. Look at the difference between these two. That's a big difference. I don't know where I got this vinyl from, but it is a very thin, you can see how thin that is. But on this one, I just did the traditional card slots. I did not put in the coin pouch. And that was because I was just trying to see how I liked the thinner feel. This is my favorite. I think this will be better for people to wear. I think ergonomically, if you have this in your pocket versus this one, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable. So pay attention to the thickness of your materials. All of these can be sewn on a domestic machine. It's not the issue with the machine, it's the issue with what feels best with how you're wearing it. So if you're gonna be wearing this or the person you're giving it to will be wearing it in their back pocket, choose a thin vinyl. Now for today's, I'm using cork, but I found something really cool. I found a company called My Little Shindig, and what they have is they have cork. This is your traditional cork. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the traditional thickness and the feel of the cork. But they also have something called a thin version of cork. Totally different. You can almost see through it. It's so thin, it's still non-furring. It feels almost, not like, papery like you can crumble it, but that's how thin it is compared to the traditional. It's almost paper thin. I don't know if that comes through on the camera, but it is so much thinner than a traditional cork. So I am going to use this cork to sew up this version. I am going to be making it like I did this cork version with that coin pouch. 
And so you'll get to see both sides of doing the wallet. It's important to make sure you pay attention to the names of these pieces because there's such few pieces, it really matters to be precise to make sure you are following the directions and the pattern perfectly. So let's go through our pattern pieces now that we've talked about the materials and let's get started with this wallet. So for our first pattern piece, it's called number one or your main wallet outer. You're gonna cut two of these. For your second piece, number two, it is called your cash slot. For the main outer, of course, you can tell it's gonna be this part right here, but you're also just gonna see a little bit of it, just peeking around the edges. For the cash slot, that is gonna be this part right here, the part you'll see in the middle. And then the back, of course, is gonna be raw. We only cut one of these, so on the back of mine, it's gonna look like this. That is where your cash will go on this part. So that is one and two. The next part you're gonna need is your card slot backing. You're gonna cut two of these. So the card slot backing is gonna be this part right here at the top. If these are the credit card slots, but this is the card slot backing. You'll have one on each side. You're gonna cut six of your card slots. No matter which version you do, either the one with just the card slots or the one with the coin pouch, you have cut the same pattern pieces. That's really cool because it's simple and you can cut it out and decide later which one you wanna do. But you will need six of these pieces. I chose to use a contrasting on this mainly so you guys would be able to see a little bit clearly once we get into this pattern. It's gonna help you to know what we're doing and what step to have this contrast. I probably should have cut this as a contrast as well. I just didn't think about it, so I apologize for that. I'm also going to use a thread that can kind of show up as a contrast, so hopefully you can see my stitches well enough whenever I'm showing you what I stitched so that you're clear on where the stitching goes and what parts we're stitching together. But that is on the only pieces we need. We have four different pattern pieces. She does have these as pattern pieces, or you can use a ruler and a rotary cutter and cut them out, whichever your preference is, but your four pieces. So now that we have the pieces established, our materials picked out, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the first step. We're gonna set these aside for just a minute and take out that piece number one, our out main walla outer. What we're gonna do, and if yours is directional, pay attention to that, but we are going to glue these two together. I'm gonna to use this Beacon 3-in-1 glue is what I'm gonna use. My cork is thin, like I said, so I'm gonna use a very thin layer of glue so that it doesn't seep through, so it doesn't cause any problems. Check your vinyl or your cork and the glue you're gonna use before you get started. I have had times when the cork and the glue or the vinyl and the glue didn't work well together and I had issues with it. So do a test first to make sure yours works out. And then what you'll do is you'll just put some glue on one of your pieces and then directly place the other piece on top and flatten it down. We will do this step first so we have time to let this piece dry so we can go on to our next step. So now I glued the number one piece, our main walla outer together, and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna top stitch all along the top edge of this piece. If yours is directional, make sure you do it on the top edge. With our number two piece, the cash slot, I'm gonna top stitch along both the top and the bottom edge. Okay, and when we're top stitching with these, you'll follow the seam allowance given in the pattern. It is, um, she gives you the same seam allowance for everything, and so you can use that when you're top stitching these pieces as well as when you're joining your pieces. For your card, your credit card slots, since I am doing the coin pouch option, I'm gonna take one of these and set it aside, and I'm gonna top stitch along the top of the other five. 
If you are not doing the coin pouch, then you would top stitch across the top of all six. The credit card or the card slot backing number three, these two pieces, we are not top stitching on these. So we are going to set these aside along with that other card slot. So I'm going to top stitch across all of these tops, top and bottom and top, and then we will go on to our next step. So now we have top stitched five of our card slots, the top and the bottom of the cash slot, and the top of the two outer wallet pieces. Now it's time to make that coin pouch or the purse as is referred to in the pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out two of these card slot pieces that we did top stitch. We're going to pull out the one card slot that we did not top stitch and we're going to pull out one card slot backing. The first thing the pattern does is it tells you to cut off a certain amount from the untop stitched card slot. It says to cut it off the width. The width is this way. So you will cut off a portion of it. I already did and you can tell that it is a little bit shorter now than this one. So what we will do after we cut off that piece off the width is we're going to top stitch down one side across the bottom and back up the other side. We are not going to top stitch across the top. So after we have this top stitch, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make center markings. I'm going to make center markings using chalk. I felt like this was the safest way for me to do that. You can use whatever you want to make your center markings with, but just know, since this is a raw edge pattern, if you do anything that shows and can't be wiped away or taken away, it's going to stay in your wallet. This is not a pattern that you can say, oh, I'll keep it in the seam allowance and you won't see it. Nope, that's not the way it's going to go. If you make a snip with scissors, that's going to show on your finished wallet. So the best option is to use chalk or something that you feel completely confident that you can get off of your pattern pieces. So now I'm going to make center marks on all of these pieces here. And so I can make sure that I line them up properly and so that everything fits perfectly. Lots of times I don't do center marks. I just kind of eyeball things. But with this wallet, it's really important. It's precise and we don't have a lot of leeway when it comes to the seam allowance and where it is a raw edge wallet. So let's make our center marks and then we'll move on to our next step. So now that I have the centers marked on these pieces, I'm going to pull out the piece that's going to be my flap, that's the one I top stitched around the sides and the bottom, and one of my card slots that I top stitched along the top. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark up those two center marks. They are going to be different sizes, so the one on the top will be shorter on your sides. I'm going to hold, let me clip this in place and hold it up and see if you can, if the camera can catch that a little bit. You should have a little bit of clearance on both sides of your flap to that card slot. So now that you have them lined up with the centers and your top edge, so your top edge is flush, your bottom edge will be flush as well. What we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch across this top edge using the same allowance given the pattern and then the pattern has us do another row of top stitching at a different seam allowance. I'm going to do both of those top stitchings right now and then at this point this will be considered the purse flap or the coin pouch flap however you want to say it but the pattern does refer to it as the purse flap so that is what I'll refer to it just so I don't get you guys confused even though I keep calling it a coin pouch. <laughs> So we're going to work on this now, two rows of top stitching using the same allowance given in the pattern. Okay, so here is our purse flap. You can see it's attached at the top, but not at the bottom or on the sides. 
So now pull out that card slot backing. We have the center marked on this, but the pattern tells us to draw a line a certain amount down from that top edge. I went ahead and drew it all the way across. I'm hoping you can see that on the camera. And what I'll do is I will lay that card slot backing down, right sides up. I will take this completed flap and lay it down on top of it, right sides up. I'm going to match those two center markings and I'm going to lay it directly on that line that I just drew. You will see that you will have a space on each side. So after you mark your center, you'll match them up and you will place this directly on that line you just drew. You should, of course, if you have it marked perfectly your centers, you will have the same amount of clearance on each side of your credit of your card slot backing. Now what you're going to do at this point is you're going to flip up this flap. Let me move my clips to the side here. You will flip up this flap and you're going to sew using the seam allowance in the pattern along the bottom edge of this purple piece I have right here. That will attach this purple piece which is a card slot piece, you, it will attach that to the card backing. So I'm going to sew across there using that seam allowance given in the pattern. So now at this point we have our flap attached, we have um, both of these pieces attached like this to the card slot backing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this flap and flip it up. I'm going to go ahead and put just a clip into it to keep it out of the way. And I'm going to take that other card slot I have. Here's the rogue top stitch you guys did previously. I have my centers marked. And the pattern also tells me to draw a line. It actually says to just draw, make marks on the side, but I went ahead and drew a line so you could see it clearly, I hope, on the video. So the pattern tells you how far up from the bottom to draw this line. This line is going to tell us where to place this piece along the bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to match up the center marks and we're going to have the bottom of our card slot backing in line with the line we just drew. So it's going to be hanging off on the back. Let me get it clipped so it looks, you can see it properly. So you can see the card slot is going to be hanging below the card slot backing. Now this is going to be a little hard to see so I'm going to pull my flap down to show you. There is going to be a small gap in between your flap and your card slots. You are going to stitch along that little gap there from the top side down to the bottom here. I'm going to stop at the bottom of my card backing. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to stitch in that little gap right here. So I'm not stitching over my flap, just the card slots down to the bottom of the card slot backing where those two meet. So we're going to do that. It, the pattern tells you to keep the flap out of the way and I understand it because you don't want it to get caught because you need to be able to open your card flap to put the coins in. If we accidentally catch this then you can't lift it up. That is the reason why you want to make sure you don't do it. But I have a very skinny foot on my machine. I know I can do that so I'm going to leave this down but just understand you don't want to stitch down this flap here in front. So let's go ahead and do this now to get these two pieces attached and this will finish this little coin purse. And you would want to back stitch at the beginning and the end to make sure those stitches hold down. So now let's look at what I have. I have the flap that can move up freely. I have a little coin pouch right here and I have everything stitched on the sides. So you will have the stitching here and then the stitching here on both sides. 
this now is kind of this this is completed at this point so we're going to set this part aside so now what we're going to do is we're going to make the other side of the wallet which is just the credit card slots this would also be the way you would do it if you did not want the coin pouch in your wallet you would just make two of these so we will have one of the card slot backings i went ahead and marked the centers on this as well as the three card slots i marked the centers on them as well the pattern tells you how far down from the top to make marks on the side of your card slot backing. I went ahead and drew a line all the way across hoping that you could see that clearly. What you will do is you will take one of your card slots, the top stitching is the top of the card slot, you will match up the centers and you will place your card slot on that line you just drew. Now I'm going to put two clips in place here just to kind of help hold that down so I can show you how this looks. So this is the way that looks. We're going to top stitch or sew, whatever you want to call it, down here along the bottom using the seam allowance given in the pattern. If you do not have a space on the side of the card slot to the card slot backing, you will need to check your pattern pieces and your measures to make sure you should have a small gap there. Now I have that stitched down. You can see it's open at the top. That will be where your card goes. It is stitched on the bottom. The pattern now tells me to measure from the top of this card slot right here, the purple, and draw a line or make your measurements on the sides and that gives you the placement for your next card slot. So I'm going to make my measurement off camera and then I will show you how I place it. So I have the line drawn. I'm going to pull out the second card slot, match up the centers and place it directly on that line. Use a couple clips here on the side just to hold it in place, making sure I still have a gap on the sides and I'm going to again stitch along the bottom using that seam allowance given the pattern. Also, you can make sure that it looks even too, that you didn't draw it incorrectly and, and everything's matching up and lining up. Okay, for we have these both sewn now. For the last one, I'm going to again use the pattern measurement to measure down from this second card slot to find the placement for my last card slot. So there is my line, here is my center, match this up, making sure I still have a gap along the sides. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but on the back of this and this, it should be about the same amount. Now when I look at mine, I see that mine is not the same amount, so I'm going to adjust just a little bit to make sure I have that same amount, the pattern, pattern. So when you flip these two pieces over, you can see that the overhang is about the same. The pattern tells you that is something we need to make sure of, that the overhang is about the same so everything comes together accurately. And she also tells you how far it should be overhanging as well, just so you kind of have like checks along the way to make sure you're constructing everything accurately and you have the proper measurements. So that overhang, you actually know the measurement it should be overhanging. Now, the third card slot, we're not going to sew at the bottom because there's nothing to sew it to. So we're going to sew down the sides and uh, just sides of just the card slots. We're not going to sew on this side but we will measure and use a seam allowance from the card slots. So that will attach all of these to the card slot backing. Okay, so we have these two pieces done. Of course, make sure you're back stitching on these. If you're someone that likes to pull the threads to the back and tie knots, you can do that as well. I'm just back stitching to secure mine. What we're going to do now before we get started is I like to kind of decide the placement. The pattern tells us that this purse pouch will go on the um, right side of the wallet and this will go on the left. 
you could do it this way. I don't see any reasons why you couldn't, but I'm going to stick with the pattern and have mine going this way. What we need to do now is we need to trim the inside. We're leaving this outside alone. So we're trimming the inside of both of these pieces. So that way when it fits in our wallet, we don't have this overhang. So I'm going to trim it and the pattern tells you how much, but I'm going to trim it right up against my purple. So I'm trimming this tan with the flowers on both of these sides away, but I will not touch what's going to be considered my outer edges. Okay, so now it's time to add the card slots and the coin pouch to the cash slot part. So what we will go ahead and pull this. So let's go ahead and pull out the cash slot. You only have one of these. Mark your centers. And then what we're going to do next is the pattern tells us a measurement to mark in from each side. So you will use that measurement and I went ahead and marked a line down, but you just have to make notations because on each side, this is where we're going to put our card slots. What we're going to do is we're going to line up this side with that line you just drew. The bottom of your cash slot will be lined up with the bottom of your card backing. Not this purple, the one underneath. So let's go ahead and line those pieces up now. So when we line it up this way, we will have a gap at the top, we will have a gap at the side, and then we will have overhang in the back. This is the way we do this pattern because this helps reduce bulk. So when you're sewing this on a domestic, you're not getting a lot of bulky seams and edges. So this is how this side will look. I'm going to go ahead and do the same with the other side. Remember those edges we cut are going to be the interior parts. Now if we look from the back, everything should look even and mine basically does. It might be a slot bit off, but we should have the same amount of overhang and everything should look good on the inside. So now to attach these pieces, we're going to do one at a time. So for this side, we are going to start sewing here and sew all the way across and down. You're going to be sewing on this edge right here to attach. We're not sewing over this part, over the purple part, just over this tan flower part. So across the top, down. After we sew that, we'll go ahead and break our stitches. So back stitch on both start and stop. But then we're going to lift up this purple and just sew across that edge there. So sewing across will attach that bottom to this piece. So let's go ahead and do that for this side. And then for this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sew, start here at the top, sew all the way across, down, break the stitches, and then lift this purple up and so to attach those two together. Okay, so now at this part, we still have this open as a little side pocket, but your top, your sides, and your bottom are closed. Okay, so now we only have two pieces left. What we're going to do before we put these together is we're, we're going to make a little bit of false stitching here. The reason why we're doing this is because we don't want to stitch all the way across this wallet. We want to leave a little gap here so that it can fold easily. So find the center of the bottom of your outer wallet and make a mark. Then you're going to use the measurements given in a pattern and make two marks away from that center and we're going to stitch along those two marks. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so now that I have that stitching made, it's time to put all this together. I'm going to take my completed par portion here. I'm going to line up this side edge and this bottom edge of the purple. 
I'm going to sew these edges. That is going to be also what closes up this pocket because it's not closed yet. So line up the bottom first and then your side. Everything should match up pretty well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch from the top of this wallet down this side. That will close up this side and connect them. Then I will pivot and go across the bottom. And then I'm going to stop and it's going to be right before the edge of this. So pretty much right at the end of this, I'm going to stop and that where that decorative stitching started. And so I will stop there. I'll back stitch, of course, at the beginning and the end and that will complete this side of the wallet. Now that that side is attached, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this side and this bottom. In order to do that, I'm going to have to fold it and pull it up a little, and we want it to have that gap there because that's going to have it to lay, like when it closes, to close flat. If we didn't leave that gap, it would not close flat. So line up your edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sewing at the decorative stitches where they end. Back stitch there. So that'll be sewing across that bottom. That'll close up that final card slot. Go to the side, pivot, and come down this side, connecting these two pieces and end here at the top. Now, the last thing you can do is you can attach the snap if you want to. I am not attaching the snap on this one, but the pattern tells you how to add the snap if you want. I also thought this would be a good place to keep business cards. I don't know, but you could do coins and add a snap however you want to do it. But now your wallet is complete. I really like using this thin cork. Look at how cute this is thin cork does on this wallet. That is perfect. I really like using a thinner cork. I feel like it's going to be much, much easier to wear, much easier to use. Everything looks great inside. You have your cash slots. You have hidden pockets here for things. You have credit card slots, coins. If you want to do a pal, a snap, if you don't want to do the snap, you can use it for business cards. Super cute wallet. Super quick to make. I love the way it comes together. If you have any questions about the way this comes together or anything I've used, just leave me a comment. I do read all comments and try to respond to all of them. I also have a Facebook group now specifically for you to show off anything you make um, from my tutorials or anything you make in general. Or if you have a question, I'll have that linked in the description. I'll have a, the pattern linked in the description. Also where I got this cork from, so anything that I'm using, I will try to link in my description. Ask any questions and feel free to leave comments. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate everyone who watches my tutorials and who subscribes. I hope you guys have a great day sewing and I hope to see your wallet soon. Thank you so much and have a great day.